Welcome, 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 folks. Thank you for joining us. Meet the Miniaturist. I am so excited to have Robin Davis with us from Robin Davis Studio. She's a miniaturist out of Toronto. So great to see you. Great to have you. Can't wait to dive into it because I am just so struck by your creativity, your whole vibe, just how you pull it all together. And, you know, you might not play in the traditional dollhouse world, but I think everything that you do can relate and I think people can be inspired by and learn from, especially the makers out there. So let's just dive right into it and talk a little bit about your background and what you've done to get you to where what you do today. And we're going to share some of the work that you do, which is awesome. So so talk a little bit about yourself, introduce yourself and talk a little bit about your background and how you got to where you are today and the kind of art that you create. Oh, thank you, Darren. Oh, you're so sweet. Um, I always say that everything you've been through is getting you to the place you're at today. So I feel like all that I have learned and done in my career has kind of prepared me for where I'm at now. Um, and so I was a visual merchandiser for years. I then went into graphic design and then I did illustration and entered the art licensing world for probably 15 to 17 years yeah. um, and was quite successful in that world. Uh, it started with children's illustration. So I went from calendars to home decor to stationery to product design. Um, and uh, I worked with a lot of really great companies in the United States and, you know, produced lots of really beautiful products. But um, in that world, you kind of tend to be asked by your art directors to produce art and designs based on what they want. And so my heart kept, you know, like just kept pulling me to these other things I wanted to do. And then eventually I kind of pulled back from art licensing and really wanted to try the assemblage world, try the assemblage uh, art, and then started building my characters from there. So I started 3D, making 3D characters. And so it kind of, everything I just told you to kind of led me to starting to play with assemblage and using all of my stuff I've been collecting forever. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you, were, you used that word assemblage because that is in its own self, it's an art form and you're yeah. just working in smaller w version of that assemblage. I love that, that's pretty That's pretty awesome. So I used to work large, like I used to make large sculptures. So I, I kind of started in making larger pieces. Um, like I have one guy here. So I, and I, he's just made from a vintage wooden, um, I think you could put needles in there. So yeah. anyway, so I used to do larger pieces, um, but my mini love of mini kept drawing me back in. <laughs> yeah, talk a little bit about the love of mini because that is really what drew me in, obviously, because, you know, I'm all about miniature. But you're yeah. working in miniature. Where did that early inspiration come from? Did you have a dollhouse growing up? Where did that inspiration to the tiny? Where, where oh, did that come yeah. from? I mean, I can't even remember when I didn't love miniature, like young age. Like I had dollhouses, absolutely. I remember the ones my dad made my sister and I, um, oh yeah, I've always loved miniature. And yeah. I feel like once I had my son in year mm -hmm. 2000, it, like I always say that he brought the magic back into my heart. So having him made me start to miss it because the magic of it. And then from there I made pocket, uh, my little, he, he's here. Yes. So from we there, we talk yeah. about that viral yeah. sensation. That yeah, pocket. Yeah, I he's like to get to it. Yeah, he's all, uh, he's here. So then from just my son and inspiring making pocket, I made him and he kind of sat on the shelf for a long time because I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with him. Yeah. And then slowly and sure, I kept making larger assemblage, doing art gallery, doing shows. Yeah. And then uh, but I kept being drawn to Pocket. I knew that there was something he he was just kept drawing me to, to hopefully telling stories with him. And then I started playing around with telling story and bit video and stop motion. And I mean, again, I'm an amateur at all that. I just play. I'm yeah. still learning, but I love exploring all of that. Yeah. yeah I, mean, I think that's a key to what you create is that what you what you build does bring about wonder. 
and the light. And so you're saying that that early inspiration came from the birth of your child. Yeah. And so, and so talk a little bit about that process of building something. And do you think a lot about the feelings that it might come up, come about when people see it? Cause I know when yeah. I see work, I'm like, ah, oh, you just have this sigh of delight. So how do you make those connections? And does it happen early on? Like, I want to talk a little bit about the process of your, of your creation. Okay. Yeah. Like my mom heart guides me. My mom heart guides me through everything I create. Um, again, like because I was in the licensing world and then having my son, um, the whole like environmental aspect of, uh, so I was designing beautiful products and the samples were arriving at the house, but I started as my son was little thinking like, what? I am participating in a bit of this impact of product and landfills. And I just, I really started to, to move towards uh, creating with intention, uh, upcycling. I was being really drawn to upcycling and being really drawn to um, how vintage things were made compared to today. Um, the environmental impact of some of the, uh, you know, our products that are made and, you know, materials and resin, just certain things I just kept, you know, again, I'm looking at my son thinking, okay, what's the world ahead of him? Yeah. And Pocket really came out of like, I was looking at him, he's three years old, he did this little drawing of a robot. And I, then Pocket, I eventually made Pocket. And then I, it was more like me thinking, I'm looking at my son thinking, I just wanted to pick him up and put him in my pocket. Oh, I, so I wanted to like protect him. You know what I, I was, that's kind of where pocket came from. Yeah. And then Absolutely. I thought, oh, I could build a little mini world around him and helping get the characters in this, all his little friends, helping uh, me in the studio and helping upcycle and use yeah. vintage things and, and create a little world using the treasures that surround you. Yeah. So that's so kind of where, yeah. So talk a little bit about Pocket. What is Pocket made of? And oh. and, and describe, yeah, let's see it. I mean, okay. I'm definitely gonna pop in some clear images, but that's great. Sure, I can always send you some, but yeah. So he is uh, made from vintage um, game blocks, like his body um, and dice, and then his arms and legs are leather uh -huh. and they're wired. They're wired for, um, so I can manipulate him and tilt his head and yeah. He's wired. And then I eventually, after I think uh, two, a couple years of playing with him, I made Locket. So. Oh, so there's a companion piece. <laughs> yeah. Locket. A yeah, brother. Lock it. And she, she's, <laughs> she's, yeah, like that's, you know, this is the lovely part of when I started developing Pocket and sharing stories is I've had people comment and they say, well, I bought a card because it's for my brother who's an uncle. Or uh, I bought your card because um, it, it, uh, my uh, so and so is a single dad, or it, like Pocket can literally, Pocket's literally a mom, a dad, an aunt, an uncle, a grandpa, gr Pocket's whatever. And I had never thought of that again. I always see him as my little boy. Right. But people that write me the sweetest messages about who the card, they might have purchased one of my cards and who it's for. Oh, I, and that just, again, just <laughs> makes my heart burst. Yeah. 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 I love it. So do yeah. you think, so it, I mean, is it the design? Is it the materials? Is it, do you find that people sort of super focus in on some of the materials that are being used and does that take them back? And does that give yeah. them that feeling or is it all that work together? What, what do you, I, what makes sense? Yeah, that's a good, that's a good question. I think because I am drawn to the dark patina, uh -huh. I am drawn. And, and so again, as when I photograph him and stuff, I have to really be conscious of that because he is a dark patina, yeah. but I'm drawn to that because to me that says it has a human history. It has a, a life. Uh, it's been played with the leather is is uh, worn and weathered. It's got oil from human hands. Right. It's been touched and enjoyed. And and so yeah. that's the stuff I'm drawn to when I'm buying, like, you know, when I found Pocket's car. Like, it's, uh -oh. you know, it's rusty. Pocket has a car. Oh, yes. Pocket has a car. Ah, yeah. I love it. I love <laughs> it. 
Well, see, yeah. then that, that's the transition to traditional miniatures that I am really glad you are like showing us. Yeah, so um, here's his bed. Oh. So it's just a tin with a, a rusty spring. Yeah. And then I make like the bedding and I make little blank, like quilted blankets. And, yeah. And it's so wonderful. all everything he has is upcycled. Yeah. You know, Meca Meccano sets can be a bench. Right, right. Uh, I think in you one know, of your posts I saw there was the queen, the queen stove. Oh, in the, one of his that awesome the whole, stove. Oh, yeah, a whole shelf of stoves. <laughs> I, oh, whenever I find a mini stove, like that shelf is full of mini stoves. Oh, is that right? Because if anything <laughs> takes you back, it's that miniature stove, that oh. iconic cast iron stove. Oh, I'll it's never for my yeah. My girlfriend had one, and I couldn't wait when I was a little girl to get over to her house and us playing yeah. with it. Oh. And I love when you put those pieces together because, I mean, dollhouse miniatures make you go, ah, oh, just in and of themselves. And then you bring on these wondrous creatures, you know, to, to complement that. It just, you know, just makes you heart. Oh. <laughs> I love it. Oh, thank but. you. Yeah, Crockett is, he's up there in the, there's Crockett. That's the hedgehog. Oh, he's is up, that right? Up in the uh, clock case, so which I collect. <laughs> Talk a little bit about, like you, you mentioned, you have these assemblages, you do, do you do showings of your work? Um, what is the bulk of your work? Because you did mention cards and sort of like materials that people can sort of, not the full piece, they could buy a piece of it. Right. Now, Alex, explain it. You please explain it. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I used to do shows. I used to do uh, one of a kind pieces, owls and robots and oh. yeah, uh, little elves. And their heads were made of clay and I would, yeah, build their bodies to do shows. And I loved doing the shows, but I, like I said, I kept feeling like I was being drawn to more storytelling. Yes. Like I wanted to make characters to do more storytelling. So mm -hmm. then I started uh, setting up scenes and photographing them. And so right now, yeah, like right now I just do uh, the cards. So there's Pocket in his oh, car. Oh, yes. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, and so they're they're like five by seven. They're not your traditional postcards. They're five by seven, so technically you could frame them. But there's so the oh. is in his stove. Oh, I know. I love making that video. So while I'm filming the videos, I'm photographing. Yeah. So I film the video to tell the story and share it with everybody, and then I start photographing little parts of the scenes. And then I right now I just make the cards. I do sell some originals, not Pocket. That's my number one question I get. I'm emails every day and direct really? messages. People want Pocket. Everybody wants Pocket. Everybody <laughs> wants Pocket. Yeah. yeah, I know, right? So uh, I used to sell mini bots similar to him, mini but bot. then the more I was gravitating towards uh, publishing more stuff with Pocket, I stopped doing that. And then, uh, so I do release originals throughout the year. Yeah. Um, but they are all kind of, they're just different pieces. I mean, I've even done the little beds. I'll do like upcycle furniture and then sell those. But I am more drawn right now to the stationery and the cards and creating videos and stuff you like know, that. I think that's a great way for people to go the next step. If they don't want to actually own the piece or the object, yeah. they can have the card or they can have the, the illustration or the that could still give them the same great feeling that yeah. you get if you had the real piece in front of you. And not everybody wants, you know, they have a piece of art on their wall or whatever, but you can, everybody can have a card. Everyone can, yeah. Yeah. Every, yeah. 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 So, so let's talk a little bit about the upcycling because I think it's awesome that everything you. everything you make is is with found objects, is that right? Everything, and yeah. Where do you find? Are you always looking? Do you ever stop looking? Like. What's your process there? Oh, I, I it's bad. Yeah, I could be it's doing bad. it. bad. <laughs> yeah. Because everything so, can be upcycled. So where do you I, stop? Right? I know. And again, uh, everything is rusty. So if I, I, I use very, very tiny rusty screws. So I rust those myself um, outside. And my husband, depending on how large the piece is, then I want it rusty, then he'll help me outside. So we either burn it and then we'll leave it in salt and water. So all of the details for me, like, um, like all those little, like the, if I use wire in something, I have to rust it. So, and then of course I'm sealing it. I have to be careful and I'm wearing gloves, but I am drawn to more rusty. Like this is a little uh, bird bath. 
Oh, but yeah. again, it's just everything is rusty. The little um, vintage Christmas, <laughs> that was the Christmas tins. So I turned it into a bird bath. So yeah, I, but I'm always at, in antique little markets looking for unique things like his car or things that I can use in the videos and tell the stories with him. And yeah, I so have had, yeah, co I've been collecting. You talked a little bit about rusting things, but are there other techniques you employ? It was Were those two pieces that you just shared, was there soldering involved or how did you get those two metal pieces together? Yeah, so I do I do a whole variety. Some I try not to use adhesives, but sometimes I do need to use adhesives, but I, I will use solder, um, wire in a lot of aspects, even for his bed. Um, so I'll drill the holes in the bottom of the bed and I'll, I'll use wire to attach the spring to the base. Right. So um, I also burn, um, I have the pyrography pen, so I'm burning in the leather, depending on what I'm doing with the leather. If I want the edge of the leather to be burnt, yeah. uh, to look more a dark, I'll, I'll, so I have a variety of tool. <laughs> I mean, I have a ton of tools. Yeah. yeah. Even though your, your ultimate, your, ultimately your medium is, is either print or video, you create with permanency in mind. I mean, yes. these are finished pieces. You're, you're, they, they're going to last. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah. Because a lot of artists, miniaturists who are doing photography or artists that they're, they're just, they're making a mock up. It's, you know, just for the shot. But oh. you're, you're in it to create the piece for, 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 you know, to live. Yeah. Long. Oh, yeah. Like, la la I'm obsessed with making mini ladders. <laughs> Oh, really? <laughs> so I'll, I have so many mini ladders. This one's just made of pencils and then little rusty paper clips. Yeah. And I have little uh, uh, ladders made of nails. I mean, I've got little mini ladders everywhere. This mini is ladders? What is that about? Yeah, there's ladders everywhere. So that if you come to the studio, when you look around, you're imagining Pocket and everyone climbing around and getting up and down the oh, shelves. Oh, yeah. So even yeah. though I'm in here working every day, yeah, I'm constantly I'm constantly changing the display and moving around where Pocket might be today or where he might be tomorrow. Wow. And there's ladders everywhere so that if I do have a little visitor, they come in and they're looking for the ladders. They're looking for where he might be or where he's climbed into. Yeah. yeah. He has his own life. I love it. I love it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You talked a little bit about the mini bots, but that is really where you, that's what people know you by. Would you, would you agree? It's really. Yeah. The mini yeah. Robot. Definitely everyone. I, I've been making robots for over a decade. So I definitely think I'm known as a robot artist ah. um, and my larger robots. I mean, they sold, I've sold, I sell, I've sold them all at shows, but yeah. again, Pocket just kept drawing me to telling stories with him. But yes, I, right. I have years of being known as a robot artist in assemblage. And an assemblage. And when you talk about shows, are you you're talking about traditional art shows, not dollhouse? Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah, one of a kind in Toronto. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, or I've been in gallery shows here in my local town. Um, and you're still doing that? I mean, is is that, no. No, no, I'm not. I haven't done a show in a, in a while. So, but I just got into, well, I just started filming little videos with Pocket and telling little stories with him and it just kind of yeah. took off. And, well, and that was your viral hit. And that is really yeah. what, what drew you in because you have a very popular Instagram account, which I love. Thank and you. But what I'm also struck by is just, you know, the visuals. I mean, the artistry is lovely and there's such a warm, wonderful feeling when you see the miniatures and the, po and, and the robot, the mini bots, but yeah. you, the way you bring it to life is really just wonderful. And Thank I wonder you. if you, could, you would, would, I mean, you're, the photography is awesome. Would, would you have any tips and tricks for people who want to step up their shooting game? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm lucky that in my studio, I have floor to ceiling windows. Oh, really? So yeah, so uh, right here, this goes. So, so I'm natural. lucky. That, mm, <laughs> so if you I could move to the house with a bigger window. I have a lot of natural light in here, which oh. I'm lucky. I'm very lucky. Very but lucky. But my studio is very small. This is a tiny, tiny space. So I am constantly, if I'm going to film a video, I'm constantly moving everything around. I mainly shoot on my iPhone. No way. Seriously? I do. Yeah. I'll get, awesome. I, get this, I get this question a lot. So... Right. Yeah, I say to everybody, young, whatever age, like just try, pick up your phone, give it a try. Don't be afraid. 
explore, play, 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 play. Use your imagination. Wow. It's so important. Like, um, Pocket is a lot to do with in my, again, he helps yep. me with my mental health. But of yep. course, I always think about how I can help uh, others with their mental health. And so as a creative, you know, sometimes as creatives are, not only are our minds full of great ideas, but also our minds can, as a creative, go dark. That's right. <laughs> so, That's you know, right. I always say that imagination and curiosity pulls me out of that. Yes. So if I can stay with a playful heart and stay with uh, exploring my imagination and staying curious, then I can usually pull myself out of any of the dark stuff that the outer world is, you know, whatever's going on out there. And that yeah. really comes a lot from my dad. I lost him at 17, oh. but his, his whole like philosophy on life uh, really was, you know, just stay curious, no matter what is going on in the world out there, just stay curious, Get, find out everything you can about whatever new because I know everyone is talking about AI right now and yes and and as artists we're all concerned and what it means and the copyright and all of that but so I always think about my dad I'm like okay well if dad was here this is what he would tell me he would be yeah. find out all you can stay curious use your imagination how how could it benefit you um it, I don't know it's just that's what keeps me it, it, I mean maybe I do live in a fantasy world maybe yeah. I do but sometimes that's what keeps me grounded. Well, I love some of these quotes that you're you're saying because you can find a lot of these quotes on your website. And one of oh, them that I found that I really you. liked was everything beautifully transforms into wondrous things. Yeah, everything beautifully broken. Everything beautifully broken. I love yeah. that. I love yeah, everything beautifully broken. And I mean, I, call, I am be beautifully broken. <laughs> but anything beautifully broken can transform into wondrous things. And that's kind of Pocket's world. Yeah. Yeah, that's a wonderful thought. I love that. And, and you know that it translates in everything we do, whether you are a, a traditional artist, whether you're doing yeah. assemblage, whether you're doing a dollhouse even, everything yeah. comes together and transforms to become something wonderful. So yeah. I love that message. And I love I love that you were able to speak to us today. Oh, this thank you, Darren. A really wonderful treat and coming to us from your studio, which is awesome. Oh, thank uh, you. I can't wait to share this with the rest of the world. Oh. Thank you. And hmm. so, so I'm going to make sure I put the in, your Instagram account below so people can find okay. you there. And you also have an Etsy page where people can shop I, some of your I, beautiful products yeah. and, um, and also your website. Is there anything else you want to um, say before we sign off? Uh, just that I have lots of neat projects in the go with Pocket. So I'll be excited to share those soon. <laughs> wait to see the life that Pocket leads. Yes, me forward. too. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. And thank you guys oh. for joining this wonderful Meet the Miniatures. Have a great rest of your day, everybody. Take care. <laughs> All thank right. <you>. Bye. <laughs>